Alrighty. And I, I have no notes. <laughs> silly. All right. So, uh, hey guys, thanks for coming out. This is Comics on Comics. All right. So, uh, we've got down in the end. We have comedian Clee Wiggins. Hi. Hello. Followed by the always destructive Ed Greer. <laughs> And we have the always happy Erica, Aww. Erica Nishi. And then we have Danny, I guess you're, you're dressed as uh, uh, the scariest thing in the world, the white straight male. <laughs> 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 All right. That is exactly correct. Yeah. I suspect your opinion. Oh, well, you have to. I pay you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, back there is my Twilight Zone swirl and uh, my beauty in the eye of the beholder doctor. Oh. So. Yeah. That is awesome. I am Rod <laughs> And then finally we have um, executive producer of Flash and writer uh, Derek Hughes, Derek A. Hughes. So uh, I, I convened this panel today because uh, we're going to talk about um, Marvel television, Netflix shows. Um, if you guys know, we had some three pretty amazing series come out this year. Um, we had Jessica Jones, Daredevil 2, and Luke Cage. Luke Cage! And they, Marvel has been knocking it out of the park. So, I wanted to find out what these guys wanted to say, so we'll start down at the end. Um, Klee, what is your opinion on these shows? Um, the, the Netflix shows are amazing. They are just, the, I mean, it's, I did not know television could be like that, and I thank God for streaming services like Netflix, mm -hmm. um, you know, or at Amazon, before Amazon, they didn't get any more shows, but uh, that they have it, because you know, I mean, I can't, I never, first of all, I was not familiar with Jessica Jones before the show, right. so, I mean, I knew all the other characters, and Jessica Jones, like, just resonates on so many levels, to so many, like, to women and to people in general, it's just, like, everything about that first season, so amazing. <laughs> I'm quite pleased. And Ed? Edward? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh boy. I, I like the shows. Uh, I really think they need to cut the, the episode orders down to about 10. No. So that they can tighten up, you know, certain things. I don't have to have whole episodes where I gotta kick it with that. Uh, what's, the, what's the lawyer chick with the moles? Karen Page? There were so many episodes, I'm just kicking it with Karen Page for the whole episode. Who wants to kick it with Karen Page's ass for a whole episode? Oh, I'm filing some shit, yo. Oh, check it out, check it out, I'm filing. Oh, I found some clues. I don't give a shit. I want to take that with a somebody in the face. Set a ninja on fire. So I double her airtime on Punisher, so there will be oh my God. 14 episodes with her, oh. Punisher, and then Frank and one. So. She's going to be filing, he's going to be putting bullets in guns. <laughs> And Erica, what did you think? I am completely enamored of the Marvel Netflix shows. Like, like Clee said, I, I just didn't know like that TV could be this way, and, and they go places that I feel like the movies don't even go in terms of addressing issues that concern everyday people. And uh, I, I, but I do agree with Ed that I, I feel like even an eight-episode arc would be so much better and tired because near like the third act they start kind of meandering and they they, they feel like they need to add in extra storylines to kind of stretch it out when they should just kind of be doing this and, uh, yeah that's when you get so, a bunch of diamond packs and stuff you yeah, know? yeah and, and like more of like mystical ninja nonsense yeah. and but I, I i love i do love the shows and, and i'm so glad to be talking about them sweet uh Dan? Well, as the creator of the Twilight Zone, I did know that television could be this good. Um, and I wouldn't mind seeing Kicking It with Karen Page. I, I would watch that. Like, give her own series, then. Um, her own eight episodes. Listen, this is how I feel about it. A lot of people said Luke Cage moved too slowly. I personally don't feel that way because I didn't binge watch it. I took my time with it. I felt... The amount of energy and everything that it took to make the series come to life, it deserved for me to slowly enjoy it uh, and slowly enjoy my culture. Uh, I won't used to watch it 
every single night before bed, I would just watch an episode. And so I feel like people that are binge watching it, which is what we're into now, and now we have live streams where we binge watch it, and on Twitch we want to binge watch it. I think that might be why sometimes people feel it so slow, because you want to get to the next one. I don't want to watch this for 14 hours. Um, but when you do take your time every night, uh, it was nice. It was a great unfolding of a story for me. So I, I personally didn't feel like it moved as slowly. Uh, Derek, so you probably have, um, your opinion probably matters the most here, you have the most experience in this type of thing. So what did you think, or what do you think of the model of the next book, the Netflix show? I think she nailed it on the head though. I think it is, it is what, what's great about Netflix and just in general is you can either binge watch it or you can take your time and watch it whenever you want. And I think that's what's the, the shift about that and the sort of the comfort about that is that it allowed to tell a, a greater story, a longer story. Um, does it have its flaws? Absolutely, you know, it's like, because I think you can see it definitely in the first season of Daredevil, where it's, it was sort of like one long, like, you know, story, mm -hmm. you know, for, for 13 episodes. And I think what they did really smart in the second season is like the first half of that was, you know, all about the Punisher. And then the second half of it was more about Electra and, you know, the, uh, the, the hand, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and with, with, you know, still with a little bit of the Punisher in there, but, um, and, and the same thing with Luke Cage. Luke Cage, you know, is setting up, it's, it's setting up a, a long arc that's going to happen. And so you're going to, you know, take your time to get to know these characters. And I think because what you have is on the flip side where, uh, you know, if everybody wants that first episode to be about everything, everything, giving away everything. And then you're like, well, I just saw everything. Why am I going to watch 12 more episodes of this? Because you told me everything I need to know. So there, there's, you know, there's, there's this balance that we always, as storytellers, have to sort of like figure out, and, you know, and do. And you have that sort of uh, much more of that leeway in in cable television and Netflix. But it's also a net, um, in network television, though. For example, the show that I've, you know, been lucky enough to write on, we, you know, we have 23 episodes. So uh, of course, you know, it's like over 23 episodes. There's going to be a long story arc that you have planned, but at the same time, you still have to, you know, address the network concerns right. about like this, and so it's a broader audience. Um, so it's there. What I like about uh, it, you know shows being on Netflix, shows being that there's so many different ways to tell stories now. Um, so <coughs> now, as as all of you guys, as consumers of this stuff, um, and you know, so yes, binging is something that we're all now doing. Um, is it? So when a show becomes popular, let's say like um, uh, Stranger Things, I have not seen it, right? It, was, it came out during Comic Con, I was super busy, I haven't had a chance to see it. Oh my god, why are we having this yeah. conversation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But you're yeah. not yeah. moderating a panel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, well, just also, before we get too into the stories, like how many people have not finished Luke Cage? Oh. All right, are you concerned right. yeah. about spoilers? So, as most shows do this, so Luke Cage dies at the end. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah, no. um, but the sequel is Karen Page. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Karen Page and yeah. Mexico yeah. Yeah. The yeah. sequel is Karen Page <laughs> and it's in the same <laughs> font as Luke Cage. <laughs> um, so, so how do you deal with, you know, we, we all can't be on top of every single show. Right. No. So how how do you uh, do you no you can't yeah so so how do you guys deal with that when when you when half of your feed are spoilers of things and you can't you can't be that guy who's like no spoilers it's been two months right <laughs> so like how do you guys deal with with uh, with that with binge like? a lot of crying <laughs> the Walking Dead I was like ah I'm like I knew about uh, the Walking Dead I knew about the first. Thing that was going to happen, but then say, I was like, no, maybe not. And then, but then all of a sudden, I saw on my Facebook and Twitter, everybody just like up in arms, and I was like, God damn it! Walking Dead like, folks yeah, are like, yeah, yeah. the worst of the lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. 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 I'm that person, though. I don't care about spoilers. <laughs> I can still enjoy it. Yeah. Yes, no, I, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting, spoilers right? Spoilers don't bother me because I'm like, but how did they do it? Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. more yeah. important to me. Well, it's still the journey. 
It's mm -hmm. still the journey. Though. It's still the journey, yeah. yeah. I tell that to Ed all the time because he calls me like Queen Spoiler. I don't spoil <laughs> stuff. I, but to him, I try not <laughs> to. No, I don't. No, I don't. Just pathological. <laughs> like, I don't spoil. It's funny how that guy was dead the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I so don't do that. It's and so I don't, flippant. I don't do, I'm not that bad. I will, I'll reveal like something super minor. Like it'll be something that's like not a huge. But for my Holmesian, for my Holmesian mind, one little slip then that makes me unravel the whole thread. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm not saying. true. That's true. And that's, well, I mean, that's everybody's feet, right? Like you know. Yeah. No, I mean I I feel like I'm not following a bunch of dick holes that are like spilling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, even on Facebook, which is like I'm a great those place. people. I I also don't but I don't actively look at them and stuff so I do like I'll see people that'll post like reaction videos or, or gifts or things like that and I just don't actively look at them um, for the things that I don't want to be spoiled I did have someone that told me about Force Awakens uh, Kylo Ren everything that happened there and uh, I know I a part of me you hide the body? <laughs> what? You, you, hide, you hid the body right exactly the Star Wars was the only thing that I didn't want spoiled, and I managed to like get through that whole like lead up and not get it spoiled. I get it. You so. got to enjoy it. I, <laughs> but but in knowing it, I yeah. will say a part of me also didn't trust them. I'm like, yeah. you're not you're not a part of the studio. Like I don't know. Um, That's not read true. It. That's right, exactly. Possible. I mean, how many things have come out and then it was or or uh, people speculating that it comes. It turns out that it's not true. Unfortunately, this was true, and it was really important. Um, but other than that, I typically, there's also a way that you can mute words on, like, so for Game of Thrones, you can mute Game of Thrones so on Twitter. Oh, that's just a, like a thing for y'all. Uh, yeah. So that you don't see it popping up on your feed, that's just a little geek. Oh, so I, so I, I, um, I don't know about Facebook, I would just unfriend those people. <laughs> <laughs> like, now you know, <laughs> yes, Chrome, thank you. Chrome, I think. If you haven't seen Force Awakens by now, you're, you're not a fan, so I don't care. <laughs> But um, if it's the week of, then yeah, you can unfriend someone that spoils it the week of. I, I, I don't know, I don't care personally for me about spoilers all the time, but um, I do know folks that it really ruins the experience for them, so I try to be cognizant of that. Um, but also another thing that really gets me is when people think they're like the goddamn Riddler or something, and they'll like they pick some like little reference, and they'll be like, "Oh, nobody's gonna figure this one out," and everybody the, does. The, the Riddler. You're, the Riddler. I'm not, <laughs> Constantly spoil stuff on Facebook, like all the time. Like, next day, the next day, I haven't had a chance to read it. I go to bed at eight o'clock because I'm an old woman, and so I watch everything like at six in the morning when I wake up, like before I go to work and stuff. So don't spoil it for me on Facebook because the first thing I do is I look at Facebook and then here this bitch go with her fucking like, spoilers. Like go away. I, I don't like that. That's but, asshole. The way I think about it is like if you're in public and you you're having a conversation with your friend about like oh Daredevil last night and then somebody says oh I haven't seen it you'll be like oh sorry man okay go go to the other room you don't have that ability on Facebook so yeah. but everybody just kind of blasts it out so I, I try to be cognizant. I like to that. make fake spoilers. If you want to have fun, just like go on Twitter and call her Ray Skywalker and like see what happens. Um, you will get a lot of angry people. It's not my fault if it comes true. Right, because she knows. That's why. Yeah. So, uh, so Derek, you know, how do you go about spoilers? Right? <laughs> so, I mean, you're literally your whole job is is a spoiler, right? Everything you say could potentially spoil something. So, how do you walk that line? How do 
don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, because you actually like, are like, if you give out spoilers, you'll oh, get I'll sued. Get, I'll get fired, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you remember that writer that used to be on The Flash? <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at 7-Eleven. <laughs> he, really, he gave me a discount on Slurpee. Like, <laughs> um, no, I think that, yeah, it's, it's very um, tricky, like especially during press. When uh, you know you're you're talking, um, you have to sort of tap dance around stuff, especially at the beginning of the season. There was stuff that was like early on the season that we had people you know were already speculating about Flashpoint and everything, yeah. and we already knew we already knew that oh it's only going to be you know, most of it's going to be dealt with in the first episode. But people were thinking like it's going to be all for the entire season, and we're like no no you know but you can't say anything. So yeah, you have to be very careful. And so I just make it a habit not really to talk about the show. So, so do you, like, do you have your own private, you, you know, like, reading everybody's feeds and reading all of the, the speculation that's coming in, you're like, yeah, no, that's never going to happen, that's clearly not going to happen, oh my god, that is close to what's going to happen, like, do you go through that? Of course, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just because I'm, I'm a part of that, right, part of the social media about all that, and I like to find out information, because I'm also a nerd, and then, like, you know, the stuff that drives me crazy that I need to find out. Um, and you know, one of the perks of actually being in this business is I have friends that are you know on shows and I can bug them, but at the same time, like, don't tell me anything, but I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, just tell me. No, you know what? Don't tell. Me. <laughs> you know, so it goes back and forth. Um, I think again, it's just that I I try to treat it as much as you know I, as as a fan as possible, so that I don't want to know. And sometimes, you know, because we work so so long and hard, I don't even know what's going on on the show. I'm like, oh yeah, we did, we did, did we already do that? Oh, okay, yeah. So it's uh, there's there's, but it's it's very, you know, I will say also uh, to correct you, you gave me credit. I'm not there yet. I'm only a co-executive producer. Ah. So because if I was an executive producer, then yeah, then that's definitely I would be bombarded like my my two bosses, uh, Todd and Aaron, and then Andrew Pressburg. Um, you know, when they do the press junket. I mean, they are sweating bullets because they're afraid that they could say something, you know, just a slip up. And and that's, you know, because then because that's the other thing, right? It's like you say one thing and then people speculate and go with yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you say. Ray Skywalker, right? Yeah. <laughs> I am going on Twitter today and talking about that. And I, say, I heard, I got inside sources that told me it was Ray Skywalker. <laughs> well, then, yeah, then when, when you get called out, you go, oh, I'm sure that's Earth 2. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so let's talk about Luke Cage. Now, Luke Cage has come out in, in a time in America where, if, you know, it, 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 race relations is in the forefront. And for, for whatever reason, over at Marvel, they're like, hey, why don't we actually deal with this using our superheroes? Mm -hmm. And they didn't have to do that. They could have been like, hey, let's try to sell more toys. But instead, they decided to say something. Um, what did you guys think about, uh, you know, as the series was coming out and, you know, people are, are discovering Luke Cage and like, oh my god, this isn't just a regular superhero. Well, if you don't mind, I'll yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, the, what, uh, to give credit to Cheo, Cheo Coker, who was the executive mm -hmm. producer, showrunner, uh, fantastic writer, um, and, you know, it's just that it really, it's a, it's a, it's a tightrope to walk because you don't want to pander to the audience. Right? You don't want to write something like, oh, they're just writing it because that's what the hot topic is right now. It's all about diversity and about Black Lives Matter, you know, and, and you know, and not really say anything. And uh, I think, you know, it's like I'm, I'm, I was just, I was just blown away by how well they handled it. Um, and because it was, because I think what they did first was they told the story first. Mm -hmm. They told a story that everybody can relate to and understand and have these topics, you know, and, and then in there be able to embed me messages in there, but not in a way that I'm going to preach and, and, and hit you over the head, you know. Yeah, and it that's, was the Easter eggs that yeah, really yeah. got me, like the, the, yes. the, the hoodie. Yes, the I was hoodie. like, that hoodie was so, like, right. it has become so prolific almost. Yeah, now, well, you see that video, right, of the guy that's on the train, on the subway? Uh -huh. And he's talking about how, you know, a couple weeks ago, people would be scared of a black man in a hoodie. Yeah. And today, you know, everybody thinks I'm Luke Cage. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, thank you, Marvel and Netflix. For, yeah, you know, I'm like, I need to give me a bullet, like, I like a bullet riddle hoodie, like, <laughs> Yeah, so there's, there's those 
transformative moments, you know, yeah. that happen. Like, and, 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 and honestly, it's 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 something for kids, right? Like, yeah. you know, a kid sees sees a, a guy in a hoodie, and now they're not gonna, you know. I saw a little girl dressed up as Riri Williams, you know, mm -hmm. Iron. Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you know, and that's like that's representation matters. It's like absolutely, because, you know, growing up. I mean, look, I grew up. I love Peter Parker. You know, it's like I can relate to Peter Parker, but at the same time, I couldn't relate to Peter Parker. You know, yeah. and but. The, it's like so there weren't a lot of heroes you know it's like there was Luke Cage but that was about it you know there was like Falcon Luke Cage yeah. it's like not, not much else you know now you have Lunella you know Lafayette from uh, uh, Moon Girl you know mm -hmm. she's now the smartest you know smartest person in the Marvel Universe little black girl it's like it, it, so there's there's you know and then you have uh, um, uh, Miles Morales you know so you yeah. have all in Amadeus Cho, you know, and so there's there's all this different rep representation that you know hasn't existed in a long time. And well, so it's great to see. Well, and that's one thing that people don't talk about is how representation for like it isn't just to, to make cool black characters isn't just for little black kids. Right. Mm -hmm. It's for everybody because I straight up saw a Latina girl, Black Panther, <laughs> walk yeah. around. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it was just she didn't think of anything other than I like the Black Panther. Mm -hmm. I think Black Panther. Cool. That's all she was thinking about. I she saw, wasn't trying to make a statement or anything. I saw a black girl dressed up as Captain America today. Boom. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. It, make, it makes a, a level playing field for everybody to enjoy these characters. I mean, I had a panel yesterday and I was saying, like, honestly, when you read a lot of these comic books and some of these things, if you're a woman, if you're a black person, if you're a Latino person, if you're anything that isn't a white male, you see these characters differently. You just do. And when there's actual representation and you see more of, you know, you're not just Captain America's sidekick. You're not just getting your ass whooped and taking, going back to Wakanda. I remember when Black Panther would show up and get kind of beat up and go back home. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like they take it back to the Kirby and Stan Lee where he can beat the whole Fantastic Four by himself. He has his whole kingdom. He fights Namor now. You know what I mean? He's like a really huge character and that's important. Absolutely. I wanted to say, I mean, when Rosario Dawson showed up, which, by the way, can we just say that girl is making bank showing up in all of these? Uh, yeah, showing up in all of these. It was so exciting, like Ed said, to see someone that looks like you. Rosario looks like the women in my family, mm -hmm. and we're, you know, she's such a strong, uh, prominent character too that they brought back. But I wanted to go back to Luke Cage and that it had the women. This is the woman to me. The women carried that show. Yeah. Black Mariah, um, uh, Misty Knight, um, you know, uh, having uh, Claire, um, even Candace, like they just really, really made, and each woman was different. That's what I loved about it too. Each woman had a different personality. Um, or a strong female protagonist. Yeah, but and, and, and they, were, they were flawed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and powerful and, and, and also at times uh, women that should be feared, uh, women that put men in their place. But I just, I loved that they obviously purposely included that uh, in it. And that's what I, I connected with so much and was so excited to see in Luke Cage. No, and and I, was, I was surprised that, you know, uh, and, and no offense, if this was a CW show, Misty Knight would have been an 18 year old, um, you know, <laughs> child running around being a badass. <laughs> But the fact that they actually got a mature woman to play this, yeah. I, I was like, whoa, that is, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I try to keep myself from, from any of the spoilers, any of the trailers or anything. I did not want to know who was in this. So I did not know that was Misty Knight until they actually said Misty Knight. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I love that 30 is considered to be mature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, when you compare to, She's the, a to the children that we see on um, <laughs> mainstream television, yeah. right? Like, it's always, and, you know, and, and now that I'm older than both Superman and Batman, right? <laughs> I've now crossed that threshold. You know, it, it, I, I can see it a lot more. Um, so uh, we also have Jessica Jones. And Jessica Jones, for me, it was a rather uncomfortable experience to watch, um, mainly because I, I realized that the story they were telling was basically a woman trying to deal with a stalker. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I was like, oh my God, like. The mere fact that women have to deal with that, again, you know, it, it, I can only imagine what it was like um, to have to, you know, to watch it, like to binge watch it like that. I, it would have destroyed me at the end. I could not watch it. I could not binge watch it. Um, so, uh, what do you guys think? It's, it was so good. The way that they address it, and especially in the climate that there is on the internet in fandom these days, was so 
ballsy of them. I, I was so impressed with them. It was terrifying watching. I mean, the Purple Man is probably the scariest villain that they've ever had to me. Because um, he said things, he said things that friends or that I've heard. Yeah. Things like, oh, like, what part of that was bad? Like, you were enjoying yourself. We, we did good things. And she's like, the part where I didn't want to do any of that. <laughs> and it, it, it was so chilling. And, and the way that they dealt with it, uh, I just blew me away. I, I, I loved it. I'd like to add, and, and uh, I think for me, the moment when he said, smile. You know, and he's like, you should smile. And then she had to smile. And it was just like that encapsulate that, you know, is like what so many women go through. Yeah, I'm sure oh, we've all heard that. That's like, like yeah. you'd be so much prettier if you smile. Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah and you hear that, and, and you just like, you hear other people say it, and you just keep your mouth shut, and you're like, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's like, and you do feel like, okay, well, maybe I should speak up every time, you know, and that's, you know, on, on the internet, as more and more people are speaking out on what is happening to them, and it's because. You know, it's Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. We are now able to connect, you know, to, to these things. These things are able to come out, and hopefully you, we can get this out of our system, you know, and, and, and superheroes will lead the way, you know, and I think that would be, be awesome. Um, Cleve, what do, you, what do you think? Uh, I just wanted to say that Jessica Jones really just resonated. Like, for any woman who's ever dealt with a stalker or with an abuser or, or any combination they're in, like, Jessica Jones just resonates so, so much. And it just, and it also, it did very much demonstrate how, like, how that, how that scenario can play out. And if you're not a Jessica Jones, if you can't leap a single building in a, in a tiny bound like this, like she can, then what do you do to deal with it? But it, I think it just, it was so empowering to watch in that, for that reason alone regardless of the fact that the storyline and that her character is so much more interesting in that she was such an obscure character to bring to the Netflix Marvel Universe too. Uh, she wasn't that well known to my mind, to at least, you know, from what I know of. Um, I mean, I don't think, Ed, you had heard of her. He knows more than more about comic books than I do. I heard of her and didn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, she, 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 you cannot go and buy a toy of her, right? Yeah. She, nobody knew who she was. She, yeah, you know, the, the, the so <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, come with come with a bottle. She can drink with Tony Stark. Uh, uh, you know, but one thing I wanted to say about about it, from my perspective, I mean, it's the best of the Netflix series. And people are like, "Oh, where do you think that?" You're just trying to be contrarian. But I'm like, "Look, man, I have this big thing. I was I was lecturing Garth, and I forgot to that, bro. But I was lecturing them earlier about it. I was like, dude, I hate how everybody blows the Joker." All right, everybody blows the Joker like he's such a great character. He's a stupid ass clown that gets wrecked every time Batman comes in the room. He gets wrecked. There's nothing Joker can do to Batman at all. It's not scary to me. It's not scary to Batman, and it pisses me off. You gotta threaten all his little he little. Robin. Well, yeah, he Robin. Has, he, th he, th <laughs> he threatens a bunch of little boys in hot pants. Stop it. That's not a cool character. That sucks. And we've bought it for way too long. When in, in, in real ass reality, the person you're scared of is your nemesis, not something you can. You've never up. suffered from chlorophobia, have you? Uh, no, I just, I just, I don't like it. I don't, I don't. That's the same reason I don't watch exorcist movies. Oh, you want to jump at a thirteen-year-old girl? I can beat up a thirteen-year-old girl. What's the problem? I don't understand the problem. You know what I mean? So, like, I really, I really think that uh, with the Purple Man, Jessica Jones could whoop his ass at any time, but he wouldn't let her. Anytime he came or he came around, she was so scared, and it made me feel. I was a big three hundred pound black dude in my house, feeling hella scared <laughs> because this dude rocks. This dude will make you put your hand in a blender. This dude will make all your friends jump off a building. He won't put a bunch of Joker gas in your crap and then you kill your kids. <laughs> he will make your mom shoot you in the face. He will make your mom jump off a roof or into an oven or whatever. That's scary. And I think it's uh, women really related to it because women feel like that walking around the streets. And a lot of us geeks need to realize that women feel like the purple man's out there on walk. Well, not only him walking on the streets, but him being someone that you know. Yeah. Like that is, I feel like, what women deal with who knows the most. You. Who knows you, uh, who knows your weaknesses, who is manipulative. Um, and we saw that recently with the not okay uh, hashtag. I believe it got two million responses. All they said is if you are a woman that has been sexually harassed, um, at some point, and all these women came forward with their stories. Um, that's what I feel. We have Jessica Jones, who is a woman that has superpowers, and even her is dealing with it. 
So that's what I feel like was, was such an important part of, uh, of Jessica Jones and that story. But again, it's like as, as women, this is, this is our story. Her story is our story. And it's not a lot of times just a stranger. It is someone that you know. And so that's what I felt. That's what I, that's what I resonated. And I agree with you that, and that binge watching it, you almost need a break. It's like Breaking Bad almost, where I'm like, oh, I, feel, I need to take a shower after this. Um, it's uncomfortable, but it's supposed to be. And the men watching, I just want you to know that that is such a small, tiny glimpse into our world that you are getting by watching that. You know, one thing that I really appreciated that they did was they showed, they, they related it to men as well, because it does happen to men. Right. So, like, uh, you know, uh, some of the characters, the, the men afterwards, you know, were talking with her and really saying, like, you felt so Oh, terrible. the support groups. Yeah. yeah, the support groups. And so, so you heard that aspect of it as well, and it was relatable. Yeah, yeah, it does happen to men. I think, I mean, not maybe not to the extent, but it does happen to men, and we, it's an important topic at that. And they don't feel that, they don't even have the comfort of hashtags coming out for them at, to the degree that we do these days, where they can feel comfortable in the whole, the way society is, they don't feel comfortable speaking about their feelings, and so those support group rooms, I think, were so important for that show as well. No, I think you're absolutely right. It's like the, you know, the, the, the masculinity, right, that yeah. is like, and just impressed upon men, you know, as, as, man as, up as little and boys, you know, and so to be vulnerable, that's very, very difficult and, and, and foreign, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, that definitely that shows it. I think also what really for myself, and it just made, you know, the, like you said, the reflection of like every day, and I can remember when I was younger where I didn't think I was saying anything wrong by telling a girl to smile. You know, because I'm just friendly like that, but then I was like, hey, you should be smiling. You know, it's like not taking into account like what you're feeling. You know, it's just more about like how you're making me feel. And it's like, oh, if you're smiling, then I, I smile and I feel everybody feels good. Come on, let's go smile. And it's like, no, you idiot. It has nothing to do with you. And, and I think that what happens with a lot of guys and just in general, they don't think about that. It's just, you know, it's, it's I wouldn't say self centered, it's just sort of unfortunately, it's programmed. From a very early age, you just yeah. oblivious. Yeah. You're you know, oblivious. So it's almost there's an innocence, there's a there's a sad innocence to it, or where they're not aware because then no one's ever showed them. There's never been any sort of course correction. And even when there is, unfortunately, it's too late because it's like it's embedded. You know? I would I would say it's like embedded entitlement. I once had a dude hit on me at the gym. Um, and he was like, well, why would you be working out if you didn't want me to hit on you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Again, this is, a, <laughs> this is such a small glimpse uh, <laughs> into our world. Um, every day, every, 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 every day. day but yeah. they did, uh, you know, uh, personalize this villain. They did uh, make it something tangible that you could see, but this is something, yes, that we deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, um, now, Derek, you guys um, on The Flash, you guys have, have created this great diversity, right? Yes. All of these characters, that, you know, if this show came out 20 years ago, it would just be a parade of white people. It, it, come out yeah. it, it did come out 20 years ago. That's right. It did come out 20 years ago, and it literally was a parade of white people. Oh, we had one black guy. Uh, oh, the one? Yeah, yeah the, the, Alex Desert. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, like, it's one black guy. Um, you know, so, but now you guys have, you know, you guys are reaching all of this, um, uh, all of these demographics. Um, now, when you guys are creating these characters, do you guys look for, all right, what do we, what do we not have? Or do you guys just like, all right, we'll just see who, we'll see who's the best actor for it? I think it's a combination of both, because you don't want to, because unfortunately, because of how the town is set up, mm -hmm. it's a lot of times that if you just put out a casting call, and a lot of times you will just get one type of actor. And you know, and it will be, and it won't be diverse. And so, and it's not even you know any fault of their own. It's just it's just the automatic default because it also is, it happens at the agency level. It happens, you know, you know, it's just the town. So it's a matter of it, like reeducating. And I think you know, to give credit where credit is due, like Greg Berlanti and Andrew and what they've been able to do and really sort of put that in the forefront and make sure that characters are diverse and continue to be diverse because it's this interesting thing that happens. Is it's like people are like. Oh well, you know, then it's like, well, why don't we have a white, you know, Luke Cage? You know, it's yeah. like, it's uh, it's that, it's that. It's, 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 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, when, when um, uh, season two of Jessica Jones is announced, and they're like, hey, every episode is going to be directed by a female. Yes. Yeah. And then half the world goes, oh, what the fuck? This is bullshit. You know? <laughs> and I imagine that if you look at all the previous episodes, there were probably zero to maybe one or two women who directed the episode. Yeah. So it's not like they came out and said, only men are going to be directing Luke Cage. No, it just, that's the way it is. And now when you try to And get... 60 of the other shows will continue to have 90% yeah, exactly. men. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like I go back to what uh, Ruth Kate Bader Ginsburg said, right? They, what, what they were saying about the Supreme Court justice. To come back to me when there's nine women on the board, yeah. on the season, you know, and it's like because there's there, that's never that's never questioned, you know, no one's questions like, oh, there's only um, eight 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 dudes directing ten episodes of that show, why is that, you know, it's like it's accepted, it's just the norm, and so yeah, I applaud what they did there with, with Jessica Jones, and hopefully that will continue to reflect, and and people will take a moment to think about what they do because it, it what's what's the decisions that are made behind the camera in front of the camera are just. I wanted to say that uh, also came up with Wonder Woman, um, and there was a lot of argument uh, unnecessarily because it is time that we allow women to direct these female-driven stories. Yeah. Um, also, another one was like, well, uh, I heard a male movie reviewer said, well, why did they consider Joss Whedon? Like, he, he's obviously uh, more uh, experienced. And my answer to that is he will always be more experienced if you don't allow these women that chance. You have to allow them the chance. You have to take a risk on them. Uh, and, and, and they deserve, like, we, the idea that you have to have a man in the list of directors to have the list valid is absurd. These are established I feel yeah, like you have Okay, you're just hit, yeah. Um, these are established, talented women, and it is about time that we allow them to direct these female stories. Yeah, yeah. I think there, there's a fear of marginalization by, by people who have previously had this privilege of being in the majority. And so, but the, the visual aid is that, like, right now we have these many male directors and these many female directors. Um, that are allowed to have projects, and when the default is this, it's difficult. So you have to bump this up. So, so there's these many women directors. We're not trying to bring down the number of male directors. We want parity. Yeah, it's like I read this thing where somebody said like um, that basically. I mean, it's not disparaging any way, but that white men should be lucky that women and people of color only want to follow me and not revenge. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Like. That's all we want, it's just the quality. We don't want to like, we don't want to take away what you have. We just want to have an equal share in what you have. And it just, everybody's still gonna get a piece of pie. I just wanted to piggyback on that and say when there is a list of male directors, like there's never a question, nobody sits down and, and in the past has been like, why isn't there a woman on here? It's just expected. But anytime you have a list and you're only choosing from women, they get upset that we didn't throw a man in there to validate the list. Yeah, no, and, and you know, it, um, we had, um, what was the, the Black Panther director, what was her name? Coolsworth? Oh, Ava. Oh, Ava. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, you know, so it, 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 they, they announced her, and, you know, people are still up in arms, you know? They're like, well, why, you know, she, she obviously does good work. Yeah. Well, absolutely give her, you know, if you're going to give Ang Lee the Hulk, I'm sure she can, she can yeah, do, exactly. you know, Black Panther, no problem, okay? No, one of my favorite movies from the 90s, Point Break, directed by Catherine Harper. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, come Ow. on. Uh, it's just like, are you kidding? Catherine Harper, Catherine Bigelow, the other one, yeah. the other Catherine, Catherine Bigelow. I mean, Bigelow. And but it's both. like, she directed the hell out of that movie. Yeah, right. and then when you watch it, you don't go, oh, oh yeah. is, that, is that a female? Right. Um, I mean, Never mind, I don't like it. Well, you know, when Keanu Reeves shot his gun into the air, I knew a woman directed it. Right, yeah. It was so emotional. It was so emotional. Because he was like staring into Bodhi's eyes, and I knew. I knew that a woman directed that. I mean, when I think about a woman directed that movie, I think, like, realistically, the most hardcore thing I saw a regular human character do in a movie is when uh, Homeboy jumps out of the plane after Bodhi. Yeah. That's the most hardcore thing I ever saw in a movie, <laughs> up to that point at least. Yep. And uh, that a woman was like, yeah, well, what we gotta do is uh, calculate all these. But that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it's almost as if women are people. <laughs> oh, 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 whoa. I know. I know this is a fantasy. <laughs> right, yeah, I know. I know. I know. But, Sorry, that's not. Uh, that's 
the revolution over here. My, my, my bad. I don't want all the guys in here to, you know, to lynch me oh, right now. Yeah. I'm going to have to get on Twitter. Oh, no. Oh. You know, so, so how do you, how do you, um, uh, like, um, on the flash we had, um, yeah. Wally West. Yes. Right? So what what was the reaction? What was it? Not necessarily the fan reaction, because I don't know if it, it was the fans that reacted, but it was the world reaction. Oh, the best Wally reaction West. I had was like not just Wally West, but also, you know, it's just like uh, anytime that it's because like uh, you know, they did Miss Martian on, on Supergirl, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, What's up with casting black people, you know, and you know, changing redheads to black people? And I was like, <laughs> There are redheads that are black, and it's just like, so what's your point? Uh, people find the weirdest things to be up in arms about. You didn't care about Wally West before all this, and it's like now that he's black kid, it's like all of a sudden you're up in arms about it? It's yeah. just like, you know, oh yeah, and, and the problem is, oh, his hair color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the True same money. way with, uh, oh, with uh, Zendaya. Uh, Zendaya is very <laughs> dirty. It's like, oh, her hair's not red. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 right? So they uh, dyed her hair. Yeah. Now yeah. what? <laughs> I love that they said about Zendaya not having red hair when, like, when she first came out. I, I have these, I have young nieces and cousins. That when she first came out, her hair was super red and it looked amazing on her. Like, she's going to look fantastic as a redhead, so it doesn't goddamn matter any goddamn way. Like, it's so dumb. It's just a dumb thing to, like, focus on and it's so deflective. Like, just say what you well, mean. Yeah, exactly. Because going back to the whole thing with the, you know, with Luke Cage, and then people always saying like, "Well, oh, this should be a white Black Panther." You know, white man is Black Panther. You know, and it's like no. There is a white man Black Panther. His name is Captain America. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also it's like because it's part of his history. It's part of Harlem. It's part of you know. It's like you can't just say like, "Well, we're just going to introduce this guy as you know as, as Luke Cage," and it's like. No. It's like, but you can't introduce a black Peter Parker yeah. because there's nothing about his race that, make, you know, yeah. that basically is, is Peter Parker. If Peter Parker had been written as a hardcore Italian, then maybe I would say <laughs> you know, a black Peter Parker. Maybe that would be a little bit weird because you're taking, like, if he was like, Martin Scorsese, <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> the lizard spilled mama's sauce. <laughs> That the only like Marvel superhero that's really really tied to being white is Daredevil. He's like Irish, Irish Catholic, Irish Catholic, yeah. and stuff. And, but like really, I'm Irish Catholic. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. The only totally white ass character in Marvel gets to also be the best ninja. You know what I'm saying? That, that's the privilege. That's the privilege that we're talking about. You're an Irish ninja. Do a Google search for Irish ninjas in your life. You will find nothing. You will find nothing. But it, it makes it makes sense to whoever we're talking well, that's about. Well, because white people are magic. They can <laughs> learn everything oh, yeah. and be the best at it. Well, in a minute, you know, uh, uh, Tarzan survived Africa as a baby. You know what I mean? That, his, his sheer whiteness kept him alive long enough to jump. So, I mean, but, but we're dealing with, and I'm sorry to be a jerk, but there's people who literally think that all that's okay. Yeah. But boy, Finn, boy, Finn better not kiss that white girl in Star Wars, boy, oh my God. boy, Iron you Fist better be white. If, if Iron Fist isn't Asian, then you're culturally appropriating my stuff, because my original character was white. It's, it's just really sad. It's really sad that, that, that again, the whole revenge thing, we're, we, we just want equality, we just want certain people to, and I didn't care about Wally West, but now I do. He's interesting to me now. Well, I think, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to just say uh, what I really like, you know, and show is the fact that we don't draw attention to it you know as Barry loves Iris Iris loves Barry it's just two human beings in love and sharing that love and I can't read that she's waving something back there it was a five minutes oh, oh five minutes, minutes. <laughs> oh, okay well thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that we're able to have these conversations at mm -hmm. all I mean that you know here, here before, there was nobody that was, there was no forum for it. But now we have Twitter. We can right. take to Twitter. And, and, and content creators here are protesting. Content creators themselves are thinking about this sort of thing. So I think we're very lucky. And, and you know, and, and absolutely, you know, as, as a content creator, with, with the, uh, the Cassandra Cain stuff that happened you know, a week ago, um, I, I felt it was necessary, you know, like, I, I didn't do much, right? I just changed the profile pic on the Comics on Comics page to, you know, uh, for support. And, you know, anytime I've ever tweeted or, or done anything in support of any of these uh, movements, I don't get anything. 
right? Nobody comes at me, nobody does anything. But I've had friends, oh, I've had wait, females. You are lucky. Right, exactly. You I'm are just, lucky. And it's just because, I, I can only assume it's because I'm oh. a guy, right? And another guy isn't gonna come at me like that for, for whatever reason. Um, you know, but I've seen, I've, I've definitely, you, you know, have been in my friend though. Exa exactly, exactly, you'll, yeah. you'll pop up, right. you'll come to my, you'll pop yeah. in there. And, and what is crazy is, um, I think I saw my friend Jeff just come in here. He's also always pop. Hey Jeff, he's <laughs> that guy. It's always my backup and my friends. But the funny thing is, and Jeff and I have had this conversation, when he comes to my defense, uh, when he's correcting another dude or something like that, the dude will suddenly back down. It is insane. It's it, yeah. iffy too. Oh, iffy, if he, yeah. Uh, if he's up in these comment streets yeah. too, he's uh, commenting. Uh, I love no, I love the men that support us, but it shouldn't have to come from a man for for you to for you to uh, take it into account. I just wanted to make a point real fast about um, the whole when you touched on Star Wars and that whole like oh you have another female protagonist. It's like, yeah, and you also get to go back and watch all of your other films that had uh, two very strong males, and now you have a Han Solo film, so you will continue to get your male protagonist. Even Although Rogue One's gonna kick ass. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm excited about it. But I just wanted to say, even with Wonder Woman, even with Captain Marvel, even with these female directors that are directing them, it doesn't even break the surface. We still have so much more. So when people are like, oh, you got your time, it's like, no. And you look back in the history of television and film, we're, we're barely getting, we're barely getting our spotlight right now. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, they did give us the five minute uh, thing. So I guess we're gonna have to wrap up. Um, you know, I, I've had a lot of fun and I can keep going, you know, for, uh, uh, for hours. Unfortunately, we cannot. Um, so, Clean, we'll start with you. Can you please tell us where we can find you and your work? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Clean the Pimp on Twitter. Um, <laughs> that actually has very personal meaning, my Twitter. <laughs> and I'm not even joking, that's, it goes deep, it's deep, deep cuts. Um, you can also find me uh, at Clean at the Ed Clean Show fan page on Facebook and at our website, Clean at the Ed Clean Show. Um, repeat that out. Oh. Clean the Pimp on Twitter, please follow me, and uh, Clean at the Ed Clean Show fan page on Facebook and on our website. It's the same, Clean at the Ed Clean Show. Listen to our podcast. Yeah, just uh, search Clean Ed, um, yeah. and it'll pop up. Because uh, uh, the, the dude who designed our, our URL is just ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> it's so long. Uh, but yeah, that, that show, Clean the Clean Ed Show, and uh, on Twitter, I'm Ed Greer Destroys. I also am an artist, so look at me on uh, Instagram, Ed Greer Destroys on Instagram. Those are pretty good pictures of naked chicks. No, um, <laughs> pretty good, pic pretty good empowering pictures of women with guns. I really, I really, I really love to do that. I don't know. Cause I, I started doing that that drawing series because I felt like, how would you respect a woman if she was just casually with a Glock or casually with an M16 on her lap on the on the on the train or whatever, just man spreading? You know, would you do that sort of stuff if she had a gun casually? So that's why I started drawing uh, those drawings. I call looks kill drawings. They're on Angry Destroys on Instagram. Thank you. I'm at Samurai Erica on Twitter and Instagram, and you can catch me on Geek and Sundry and uh, Hyper RPG on Twitch, and sometimes I'm on Screen Junkies. <laughs> you can catch all the seasons uh, except for four of the Twilight Zone on Netflix. <laughs> uh, you can also catch me at Ms. Danny Fernandez on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Tune in to my Dragon Ball Z podcast called Krillin It, that's on iTunes, and then uh, I'm also at Geek and Sundry uh, on a show called Anime Gateways. Oh, I, just, I just realized, what about Braun and Sterling? <laughs> <laughs> Last year I was uh, Kylo, I was Kylie Ren. So. <laughs> um, you can catch me at uh, Twitter at the Black and Ease, um, and then watch The Flash Tuesdays. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Eight o'clock Eastern, Central. I don't know. Magic time zones. Uh, we're on TV on the CW. You can watch it on the internet. On it's, the, on the, it's on the internet. On the internet. <laughs> on the internet. Um, and I am Pomeroy Rocha. You can find the show at Comics on Comics on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, um, on Smoke Signals. And uh, good thing we we are ending the show before all these people showed up because we talked about really cool things that we don't want any of these people to know. Um, the show. Uh, we're, I'm 
about wrapping up season seven. Season eight will begin next year. Um, I hope to make some cool announcements about that. Um, and yeah, this has been Comics on Comics, a show with the greatest comic minds meet the greatest minds in comics. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <clears throat>